Hello and welcome to another edition of the Moving Iron Podcast. This podcast is proudly provided by Axon, helping dealers move more iron for almost 100 years. Find out more at axontire.com. Axon was started almost 100 years ago out of a passion for keeping agriculture moving. It's that same passion that drives them today. With a vision for a better experience for both farmer and dealer, they set out to create a better way to move more iron. When you partner with Axon, you get immediate access to a full range of products and solutions designed to meet the complex needs of today's grower. Axon carries all major brands and sizes of tires, wheels, and tracks. From custom colors and sizes to fully customized wheels, you can have the solution for virtually any problem today's farmer is trying to solve. To find more or become an Axon dealer, please visit axontire.com. This podcast is also brought to you by Valley Transportation. Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800-657-4910 or go to valleytransinc.com for all your trucking needs. At Valley Transportation, our goal is to help you reach yours. This podcast is also brought to you by Ag Direct. No matter how you buy your ag equipment from a dealer, auction, or a private party, Ag Direct can help you finance it. You can even apply online at agdirect.com. Learn more about your financing options at agdirect.com. Moving iron in the 21st century. Hardworking people working hard for you and me. Moving iron time and time again. Through the years you'll find us here. Hello and welcome to Moving Iron Podcast number 249. This edition of the Moving Iron Podcast is brought to you by Axon Tire, helping dealers move more iron for the past 100 years. For more information, go to axontire.com. Also, Valley Transportation has been hauling ag ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800-657-4910 for all your trucking needs or go to valleytrans.com. Valid Transportation, our goal is to help you reach yours. And no matter how you buy ag equipment from a dealer, auction, or a private party, Ag Direct can help you finance it. You can even go to agdirect.com online and apply there. Learn more about your financing options at agdirect.com. What's up, brother? Another day. It is. Another day, another nickel. Well, you're doing better than me. Well, I'm hoping to... Still a million dollars short of being a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> I want to punch somebody in I'm the face. I'm a million and a half short. When someone says that to me, I want to punch him in the face. There's right. nothing more annoying than that right there. I people say that. Quite honestly, that is the first time I've ever heard that. Are you serious? Yeah, so congratulations, Ham and Ager. Oh, right on. Way to go. <laughs> right on. <laughs> All right. Well, today we have a lights out show for you. Lights out. Lights out. We've got uh, two buddies of ours that will be on here in just a little bit. Eddie Claxton and Lou Bordone out of, uh, what's the name of that place they're out of? Flint. Flint. How could I forget that? Flint. They have stores. If you rub those those guys together, you have to be careful. It will start a fire. Those guys spark, you know what I mean? So they've got, they're going to be on here a little bit later. Uh, Flint, Flint Ag's out of Georgia. And we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on in the cotton market because, and how that's affecting their business because as, as you know, cotton is kind of through the roof right now. Yeah. And it's not just in the roadside or in the ditch. No. No, and if you do pick cotton, now you're probably going to get rich. You might now. <laughs> so. Way to go, Randy Owen. <laughs> <laughs> so you never know what's, what's going to come from that. But anyway, those guys will be on here in a little bit. So, Aaron, first week coming out of this, we had rough markets kind of everywhere, a bunch of market money coming in, uh, outside market money coming in. Did that peak anyone's interest any more than already on buying equipment? In the week? last week. Yeah. Since our last recording. Yeah. Yes. Did Very it. busy week. Very busy week. Yep. What's the what's people looking for? Uh, literally anything. Loader tractors, which we're in that time of year. Right. It seems like pre-calving. Right. Everybody kind of, yeah. well, let's get a loader tractor. They're about to pop. Loader, loader tractors and, and utility vehicles with cabs. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, loader tractors, super hot, yeah. which they never aren't hot. Right. Um, combines. Are moving row crop tractors is still yeah. yep love to sell you one if they existed but nobody has any. Mm-hmm. Um, planners, planners really, really, really a lot of planner calls in the last week. So mm-hmm. that that really ratched up pretty hot. Yeah. That's probably the biggest week to week thing, or mm-hmm. even be so bold as month to month. Which only stands to reason because yeah. it's almost February. It's almost February, and a lot of places are gearing up for that that late season 
um, early, you know, early season run here where we're going to start looking at planters going to the shops and getting bolts on, bolting stuff on and those kind of things. So, yep. Locked down and loaded, baby. Locked down and loaded for sure. So, um, as you take a look at what's going on now, we had a call with the guys from Tractor's name a little bit earlier and we're, they were showing us something, something new and they, they have a trend now that they're going to start putting out there so you can see a, a trend line develop and they've got a, uh, a little graph they were showing us and it was amazing to watch the sharpness in in real crop tractors oh man in november that was like a straight up shot in november and then a month later you had combines took a took a big shot up so now we've watched this trend line come across and start to develop and we've hit what i would consider to be i think the top of the market I don't. I don't know that it can go Let, much. Let's say this. Okay. Let's hope this is the top of the market. <laughs> well, I mean, look at that trend line. Cause you've watched that trend line. It shot up and it kind of went up, went up, and now we kind of bounced across the top up here. And I really think we're going. I'm not saying it's going to go down at all. But what I'm saying is that I think as more machines start to hit the marketplace, we're going to see more of a movement in in, in, in values and in prices and what we see happening at the auction market. Because you and I both know that we're going to see a slow trickle to a big crescendo at the end of the year with, with the amount of inventory that we're going to start seeing come through. Given the boots on the ground. Right. Hey, look at that. Hey. <laughs> Given that factor and talking to people all week, different colors, different parts of the country, your slow trickle at the end of the year yeah. is quite, quite doubtful. No, no, I'm saying slow trickle up to the end of the year where we have a giant crescendo. Oh, crescendo. Oh. Yeah, that yeah. surely <laughs> is not happening. Yeah. We'll that's have a, the slowest trickle yeah. for eighteen months. That that's Italian crescendo. So crescendo. It's one of those. It's a you know. It's a foreign word for you. So right. Right. Didn't right. Know what that means. It's good. It's good to be global. Well, that's what we do here in the Moving Iron Podcast. Yeah. We take everything into account. But see the the I don't I don't think we're going to. We are back into t- talking to red guys, blue guys, uh-huh. yellow ish. Greenish, black, red, <laughs> rainbow guys. <laughs> Nothing is picking up. In fact, if anything, things are getting delayed again. Yeah. So we are we are here to ride this out for mm-hmm. quite some time. Right. Your crystal ball is looking a little clearer. Yeah. When you like to throw dates out there for shock factor. Yeah. <laughs> And get a rise out of people. I'm like a used equipment <laughs> Nostradamus. Ooh, you know what I mean? Very hey. close. Very close. On the brink. Yeah. But I I think given given that, I don't know where the top is, but I hope we're almost there. And and here's why. That stuff's all gonna come back. Oh yeah. And we don't want Joe Farmer, who just bought that from us. Right. And oh, it was the only tra and I'm not saying us. Or no specific dealer. Just in general. Yeah. yeah. A guy comes in, buys a tractor. Well, in this market, if it keeps going up and up and up and up and up mm-hmm. from here, when it corrects, it's going to hurt twice as bad. Sure. As mm-hmm. like the 14, 15, 16 <laughs> yeah. correction. Exactly. It's yeah. going to hurt worse. And I, I have a really big feeling it's going to be an almost overnight type deal. It's gonna happen. Um, it's gonna happen quicker to shut it off this time than it will than it did thir- thirteen to fourteen. Yeah, I think I think you're you're probably right. I mean, if you if you look at what what that backlash is gonna be like, I mean, look at it this way. Yeah, easy come, easy go, right? Right. When we got to seven dollar corn in twelve, mm-hmm. that was a nice steady uphill climb for yeah. three four years. Yeah. We woke up in January, had five dollar corn. We could wake up another day and have three dollar corn. Yeah. This came overnight, relatively. I mean, there's a lot of factors involved, you know, trade and everything else, yeah. but it ramped up so fast because of all the factors behind it that I think when it falls, it's gonna fall just as fast. Now, you, being the Nostradamus, could tell us, <laughs> if you have an easy climb, <laughs> yeah. is it an easy fall? And if it's a sharp climb, uh, is it a sharp fall? It's a, uh, what's the old saying? It's an escalator up and an elevator down. Yeah, there you, you know? go. So it's one of those things where you have that. I don't, I, I think it'll be. See, the, I would paraphrase it as that thing at the amusement park. Uh-huh. 
with them chairs and it shoots you up the pole uh-huh. and then you free fall down, that's our market right now. Yeah. We're just stuck at the top. <laughs> I, the, the, the thing about all of this is that as long as, as long as inventory stays the way it is, until yeah. lots become full again, right. right? That'll be the factor. Or even a correction in commodity prices could could change this. Back I think too. that would have less impact on it than obviously that would have less impact on it than supply. Okay. Instead of twenty guys after one tractor, you'll have ten, right. but you still just have the one tractor, and that's where the problem lies. Yeah. For now, yeah. what's the problem now will be the solution later. Yeah, I think so to some extent, but I also think that the sooner or later guys are going to get their balance sheets full of of equipment. Oh that's, yeah. That's going to be like I've made my made my purchases and updated what I'm going to update. Absolutely. And it doesn't matter to me what what's out there right now. I'm I'm not going to buy a new planter, I'm not going to get a new tractor, I'm not getting a new I've done all that. Right. I'm on a 3-year cycle for my combine, I'm on a 5-year cycle with my tractors or whatever the number is and yep. I'm I'm in what I'm in and that's how we're going to roll and Absolutely. I think that's that's going to happen, and that, when that happens, you're going to start seeing that. But it'll go right back to the way it was. It's just you're going to have you're going to be selling into a huge amount of one year old stuff again, you know, and because that's that's really kind of the the real tell right now when this does start to slow down is that it is so bare. How many one year olds are left? Well, I mean, you have to start. You're starting. You don't have a, a, a front, middle, and end of the washout cycle. You've got a front. Right, and then you've got to make the middle, and you got to make the end. You know what I right. mean? So you have to find those customers that are going to want that one and two year old stuff, three year old stuff when it comes in, so you can get the five and seven and eight year old stuff, so you can get the the ten and twelve year old stuff. Well, and not only that, like your washout cycle, mm-hmm. case in point, that revolves around the dealer world, right? Right. We've sold a lot of stuff with no trades. Yeah. So there is no cycle. It's out there. It's in the yeah. marketplace. It's out there. It's fun. not in yeah. our house. Right. And that applies to a lot of dealers. Mm-hmm. So that washout cycle cycle is still there, but it's off doing its own thing, yeah. unattended to. That could become very problematic at some point. Yeah. I just I think about 2010, 11 time right. frame, 2012 in that area, where you had... We didn't really have an overwhelming combine problem. Our issue that we had in inventory was all we had were 2011 right. 97 70s, yep. 2010 97 70s, and they all were 230 $250,000 combines. Right. The occasional 50 series would pop up, and it would sell real fast. The occasional 60 series would pop up, but it'd sell real fast. Especially a late model 60. Yep, and all those things. That's that, And that's what I'm worried about when this thing corrects, is that we are going to have the front end. We skipped the buyers boom, boom, again. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, it's going to repeat itself. It is. So We skipped the, the, the 70 guy, mm-hmm. ordered a new S7. Right. So we yep. skipped a whole long list of S6 buyers. <laughs> Yes, we did. And they've been missing for 10 years. I don't know where the hell they're at. <laughs> yeah, they they never went they never came back, you know. So, uh, but that, that's what I'm worried about as you look at this stuff as as the correction comes. I still think we got 2 or 3 years before we start seeing that of yeah. any kind of magnitude. I think we'll start seeing the, you know, the the road signs are going to start popping up and, you know, exit here, yeah. you know. Yeah. Caution. <laughs> when it says exit here, don't wait for the next one. Right. right. So start thinking about that. That's that's kind of what I think, and that's where I've been thinking about this stuff as we kind of go through these these different exercises. So right on, right on. So well, now it's time for our boots. If on folks the want to reach out to you, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> so Thanks for joining our ten minutes. <laughs> so now it's time for the uh, boots on the ground segment, and we've got our two fellows from Georgia that are going to be here with us here directly. We got Eddie Claxton and Lou Bordena. How you guys doing? All right. Great. Right on. So, Ed, Eddie, let's start with you. What is it that you do for Flint Ag Equipment? Uh, official title is used equipment manager. Um, Lou and I uh-huh. kind of have our segmentation. A lot of dealers have one person uh, doing the dual role. Some have it split apart. Uh, basically, I'm on the front side of everything. 
all the trade evaluations, um, anything that we need to put a value on, figuring that first price of what we really need to put it in inventory for. And once it's in inventory, uh, both of us kind of work together, making sure that it gets moved to one of our eight locations if we need to move it. And then he takes it over from there, does all the marketing and uh, uh, handles, you know, the buyers, person to person sales, dealer to dealer sales. Um, if he needs to adjust pricing, whatever the, that kind of that market is at that point. But uh, I mean, we work basically hand in hand. We're never, we may not be together each day in the same office, but we're constantly, you know, back and forth with each other. Uh, some form of communication on everything we're doing. And it's worked pretty well for, for you know, them bringing us in to, what we actually inherited when both of us got on board. Um, he was already here. I came in uh, early 16. He came from another division, so basically we basically got slapped in the face with a bunch of overaged, uh, overvalued equipment, and some of them been sitting here for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Right. But, I mean, pretty much I'm a used equipment manager. He's the used equipment remarketing manager. We basically work hand in hand and day to day, and make sure we get everything handled for our, for our managers and our owner. Um, you know, we're an eight store operation in Southwest Georgia. We're one of three divisions for our company. Uh, they have a construction, forestry, a fire division, and the ag. Uh, we're on the ag and turf side. So. Okay. Now, Lou, um, talk a little bit about kind of what your day-to-day -day looks like. Sure. Um, so like Eddie said, I mean, we're a little unique as far as how we, we organize things. And um, so mo most of my efforts are uh, into monitoring our, our our inventory and seeing, trying to get out ahead of, of problems. Um, I mean, we, we're in kind of a unique situation down here in, in, in Southwest Georgia. And that, and I think it's, it's something that, uh, that you may see in different parts of the country more than than others, in that the way that the consolidations have have, have come about and the way that the the the, the land ownership has evolved, um, you know, you have less and less balance as far as our ability to wash out of of, of equipment, right? So, um, and it, it almost seems as seems seems as if as as the years go on, you've got more A's and a lot less B's, C's, D and D's, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so that that's my challenge is to try to uh, 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 consult up to the, to the, to the retail, to, to my, my, my counterpart on the, on the new equipment side and try to throttle that, that the sale of new equipment to match our ability to, our ability to absorb the used, right? Whether it be retail or whether it be, you know, looking outside and seeing, all right, well, what's what's the out of area ability to absorb? I mean, how's the rest of the country or the or the or the plant doing? Um, you know, so I, I guess the, the the easiest way to put it is um, my my number one goal or my my what I how I see my my responsibility is to clear the way for the 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 retail guys to be able to do their job in a in a healthy manner. And, and, to, and to avoid uh, problems, because the problem with us down here um, is that in, in steady state, like, I mean, when things are normal, we produce surplus. We know that, right? Um, the issue is uh, if that stayed the same and if that was consistent, this job would probably be pretty easy, mm -hmm. right? But um, it changes, and and it and it's supremely segmented. Um, you know, one one year we may be loaded down with a certain category of equipment, and uh, which is a, a mainstream category of equipment, being uh, a grain harvesting or tractors or sprayers. And another year we may be loaded down or, or out of balance with some neat, you know kind of niche equipment, be it a uh, uh, cotton or peanut equipment, right? Um, that you don't really have a lot of places to go with, right? Mm -hmm. So. To circle back to like your original question, what does my day look like? Um, 
sometimes my day is going out and being a mainstream remarketing manager and another where I'm talking to guys in Illinois and Iowa and Nebraska and, or, 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 or here in Georgia, where other times I'm out there trying to figure out, you know, uh, man, we're loaded down with cotton pickers right now. Where, where's that market at and who's buying and kind of reinventing the, my relationships and uh, trying to figure out adjusting also our reconditioning program and, and kind of how we get things through. Because obviously when your customer changes, your protocols change. You know, we, we've, we've talked a lot about that before is not, not every buyer has the same expectations. So, um, so that, that has a lot to do with what, what I'm doing day to day. Gotcha. In a nutshell. <laughs> No, no a peanut candy. shell. Peanut shell. Yeah, there you In go. A peanut shell. There you go. Man. All right. So cotton is obvious right now. Cotton is is very high. I mean, I saw the other day some December cotton was was opening up as a, at a dollar. I mean, I don't know how often that happens that you're forward contracting dollar cotton. So in an area that's heavily cotton, you know, you got all kinds of cotton stuff going on. Cotton kind of drives the market down there. How's that affecting your business, and what are you guys seeing right now? I mean, obviously things are busy, and it's it is what it is because of equipment wise. But with the volume of tractors that you guys sell based around cotton, what are you seeing right now on the use side of that? You want to start, Eddie? Uh, what we're seeing right now on on the cotton side is we're seeing some movement, but it's through the export side. Okay. Uh, we're getting some local guys. We had a lot of that uh, December type business before the end of the year. Uh, and then the balance has really been more or less a lot of activity, a lot of interest from the exporters. But we had our normal cotton business as usual. We get an allocation from deer on picker. So we ate our allocation up with all our local guys and our mud customers. And uh, from that point, now we're taking, as Lou calls them, the babies of all those trades and trying to force them down the line and figure out who's going to get them. Uh, but with deer bringing in a new series picker to 770, now the 690s and the seven and the 7760s are, you know, a, a reference to y'all would be like, you know, when they went from the 50 series to the 60 series. Right. And up to the to the S series, I mean, you start getting machines that are getting older and older, and they just they're losing they're losing value and losing steam. Uh, but the cotton market is is hopefully surely going to help us with the input cost. Uh, there's we're going to still be in cotton and peanuts. That's that's our two main crops here, other than vegetables, you know, watermelons, that sort of thing. Uh, we had a bunch of corn, but now corn's getting quite expensive right um, mm-hmm. to back back down on that and do more peanuts and cotton but uh you know if you ask me today still a hot ticket is tractors um the cotton equipment will come but we usually see some cotton business on into kind of the late summer right before we start defoliating and uh, we'll get some guys that want to buy at the last minute or do some trades at the last minute so, what are you seeing, yeah. Lewis? So, I mean, here here's the thing about cotton, and it, and it, it and it's kind of you know, it it, it 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 it's so simple that it that it gets complicated. So, so stay with me here. Like you know, so you have a finite amount of acres, right? And while our guys do have the ability and the flexibility. To like as Eddie said, like move 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 some acres over and say, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna swap over X amount X percentage of acres over to corn or, or peanuts or whatnot. What you're seeing is is over the years, and I, and I and I've grafted. I mean, I, I've I've looked at it and kind of analyzed it. Um, all from year to year, you're not going to see a tremendous amount of of shifting of acreage. Um, it's really got to make, for instance, I'll give you the example of corn. Uh, corn is, if, if corn goes through the roof, 
Um, yeah, so maybe some of our guys that decide to move over 5, 7, 10, 12% of their acreage over to corn, right? But it's got to really, really, really make sense why logistically there's a lot, we're at a tremendous disadvantage right. down here. Now, yeah, we, I mean, we yeah. can grow some tremendous corn. We can grow some tremendous corn down here. Our yields are, are tremendous because we're all underwater. We control all our conditions, right? We can fertilize through the, the pivots. And we, I mean, so when we commit ourselves to it, we can we can do really well, but we're still at a tremendous disadvantage, right? So that's that that's the number one reason. And the number two reason is what what Eddie alluded to as far as the the equipment that's coming out and and you know we we saw a double digit uh, baseline pri- uh, uh, increase with the, with the new model cotton pickers. I mean, you're looking at you're starting to flirt with a million dollars a piece for a new cotton picker, yeah. right? Um, and so, and you're talking about one one cotton picker uh, is good for uh, you know anywhere between, uh, the, 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 depending on your location and kind of what your what your harvest window is, anywhere from say your fifteen hundred to three thousand acres worth. So you know we've got a handful of of large growers that are having to uh, run three, four, five, six cotton pickers. So just do some real quick math there. You're pretty darn committed. Yeah, uh, yeah. From a from an from an equipment standpoint, letting a, a cotton uh, shifting acres over to corn and letting a cotton picker sit in a barn and and just just the not the hour but just the annual depreciation is will almost make you sick to your stomach and, and and we'll have that happen. We'll have customers come to us, you know, during the summer. Oh man, I want to. Uh, I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to out. I think I'm going to have my cotton custom harvested, and I'm just going to stick to corn this year. Are you willing to uh, to just uh, 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 straight out purchase my cotton picker because I I just I don't need it sitting there to, and have to make a payment, and that's a very difficult, very hard decision for us. I mean, it's got to really make a lot of sense, right? Mm-hmm. Um, right. So that leaves the grower in a position where he's got to stay committed to that to that crop. So that that so that would be the second point. The third point is just the rest of the infrastructure. I mean, you know, we're we're set up for to absorb X amount of production of of, of cotton, X amount of production of, of peanuts from from the sense of of of, of storage, of of, of of brokerage. Uh, you know, it, it, it's all it's all pretty uh, sized accordingly, if you will, right? Um, so. You know, right now, what is where the rest of you know? You talk to dealers around the country, and they're and they're telling you um, what a what a bad situation they're in, and where they're really losing a lot of opportunities, and they're uh, trying to fill orders, and they're having to go out and pay kind of top dollar to to fill retail orders. Um, so, so we may have seen a, a, a bit of that. I know Eddie's gone out and bought some tractors here recently, and you know to be fill some orders, but for the most part, our guys from a fleet standpoint are so committed and so consistent because their operations are so large and their role cycles are so consistent right. that 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 enables us to plan ahead and their deals are 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 discussed and and uh you pretty much right now the only curveball is a deer's willing to commit. You know that, that that that's what that's what we're that's what's kind of cr- throwing us for a for a curve because historically, like a lot of our guys will kind of pile up when they want to do their deal when they want to do their deals, right? And um, right now, from a delivery standpoint on the new, that's a challenge. So we've had to back up and look. Say we've got X number of of we'll call it you know l- large deals, large equipment fleets that that we pretty much do every year, like. We've had to sit down and kind of spread those out a little bit, not because of from an absorption standpoint, but because if you don't spread them out, you won't be able to, to bring the tractors in, get them PDI'd, uh, get them invoiced out, and, and kind of refill the hopper uh, with, with, with water loop. Um, so that's really been the, the one challenge that, that we've seen in the last 12 months. But I guess the silver lining, or kind of the, the where 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 dealers like us in the South kind of set ourselves apart. I'm not saying good or bad. I'm not saying it was premeditated or we're doing anything better than anybody else, because normally our the 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 volume of equipment 
and the timing of it is our biggest crutch. Right now, it has been a it's been a blessing in disguise because, with the exception of when it shows up on the yards, we really haven't missed a lot of opportunities. Um, so, I guess in a nutshell, that's that. And and uh, so right now, yeah, the 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 obviously on on the on the risk on the on the trade side. Um, I mean, unless you live under a rock, you know what's happening with equipment. Uh, the guys that are even more savvy know that we've realized a lot more price increases from deer. Our costs have gone up. We're ha- that equipment's costing them more. Oh, yeah. But uh, they also know that their equipment's worth more. Right. And um, so that that's something I know Eddie grapples a good bit on. And 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 once the equipment shows up on the yard that I grapple with. Um, to to determine, all right, what is stuff worth in the mar- worth in the marketplace? Uh, where do we need to be on this stuff? And um, and having the discipline to not to to stay consistent and um, not how can I put this in a way that doesn't kind of make me make it sound terrible? Like um, <laughs> things are good, but I think that maybe some other dealers around the country are seeing. A, a much bigger spread in the margins that they're seeing and in, in the pro and their profitability than what maybe a dealer in the South is because of the frequency of our roll cycles. You don't want to go out there and go crazy because you know, you're going to see that tractor again in 12 months. And if I, by that time, the market has kind of, kind of gone back to normal, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> You need to be careful what you do with those B and C customers, because it's going to affect your ability to get you know to be able to do their deals. Right. If that makes any sense. Yeah, it oh, makes yeah. sense. It makes sense. So talk a little bit about that. So that's something I I talk about a lot, and I, I think about a lot is when you're looking at your traditional secondary buyer. You know, you got the guy that's going to buy the first generation trade. You always those guys are pretty pretty well established. You know who those guys are. They're going to roll every two or three years, and then you've got the next guy that's going to buy his stuff that's rolling every three to five, seven years, something like that. And those guys, to me, that that's where I worry about, you know, the next three to five years, what's that look like and how that plows that play out. The B, because, the B customer. Yeah. The B customer, because a lot of those B customer guys are, they've become B customers because they don't have anyone coming back to the farm in a lot of cases. And they've, be, they've just kind of, you know, this is as big as I'm going to get. I'm not going to get any bigger than this. I'm going to kind of supply my farm with what I need when I'm <clears throat> when I'm ready to buy something. I'm ready to buy something, and, and I'm going to retire and, and move on here in a little while. The A guy is going to come in and pick up my ground or rent my ground or whatever they're going to do. Um, are, are you seeing that that retirement kind of horizon get a little bit closer to some of these guys and and what if if you're seeing that? What do you kind of how are you handling that as far as that next level of customer? Like wh- how are you how are you how are you adjusting your washout cycle accordingly? And I and I and, and I want Eddie to chime in on on, on this, uh, you know, as well. But I'll, I'll put my my what my observation kind of way we see it. So <laughs> how can I put this? Like <clears throat> there's a lot. I, I think that listening to you guys over the years, even and seeing how. What you just described is a perpetual cycle. Sure, like it, it's it's constantly happening. Yep. I, I think with us is it's not as a although it's a concern. It's something that you've always got in the back of your mind that the consolidations are gonna are gonna continue to occur. I think the rate at which they occur in our part of the world are a lot less less frequent. Okay. We're, we're not seeing. You know, you guys are always talking about retirement, retirement sale this and retirement sale that. And, you know, oh, I went to this retirement sale this weekend and, oh, I was coming home and ran by another one. We don't see that. I mean, we will see, a, you know, it, it's a bit, we, we see them, but we see them, you know, when there's somebody, when there's a retire, like a, a, a sizable retirement sale, it's something that's like, we're really talking about, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think what you're seeing more of is, um, you, you, th- th- there was, and I wasn't in the sector when maybe some of the big, the big consolidations kind of came about, right. but, 
um, you know, you've got you you may have that we label A and B customers that maybe farm in similar acreage, similar yep. number of acres. Yep. But the, what the only thing that separates them is their philo- is their is their philosophy on equipment. Right. It's like yep. I, I'm not gonna. I would I would never buy. I don't think I'd ever buy a use a, a, a new pickup. Right. That's just how I am. Right. You know. And and uh, it's not important to me. I mean, I know that that model is going to stay the same for a couple of years. So I may be behind the eight ball, but I'll still have a newer truck still within warranty for, for, for at least three years, you know, um, well with equipment's the same and, and we've pushed that along as well. Like it's, um, because we cannot sustain 20 a customers, mm-hmm. the ideal, like what, what we've tried to mold, um, has been, all right. So if we walked in and there was 18 or 28 customers and five or six uh, B's and uh, and then just a handful of C's. Like we've chipped away at it year by year and said, all right, well, let's take eight of those B's and let's let them write. Let's figure out what value proposition or how to pitch some value to that those guys to ride the coattails of 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 one of these A customers, right? And um and you got to be and, and you got to kind of think through that. And work real closely with with your sales guys. Um, and take their guidance on that and say, all right, well, uh, John, like, you know, who are two customers that would be compatible here? And, and, and or, or maybe you take two of those A's and you, and you let them ride the coattails of one of your big A customers. And man, I'll tell you what, when you can pull that off, you've really done something. And so uh, you combine that with the amount of, eight, the amount of hours that we, that we put on equipment down here, that'll take you through almost to wholesale. You know, right. you, sure. you can almost yeah. get wholesale by by the by the third or worst case scenario by the, by the fourth trade. Right. Um. You know, we're we're taking. We've got growers that are that we've put say on a one or two year cycle. That their 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 utilization on their the, on their equipment fleet is so efficient and so high that they're trading one year old tractors or eighteen month old tractors with the two thousand twenty five hundred hours. Mm-hmm. So you know, right there, you've already like by the time they're trading in a new tractor that's still within basic, like. They're about as far along the 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 kind of the usage or the hour um, uh, 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 curve that you guys would be having to deal with, like say with a, like a B or a C customer. Right, right. They're and they're, they're moving it. The they put so many hours on because of their efficiencies. <clears throat> right. They move it from an A plus down to a B or B minus themselves yeah. just exactly. by how they're operating. We see that and, and in so the, yeah. Okay. So yeah, that I could see that exactly. that's extremely helpful yeah. in a way. Yeah. Is if the yes. dollars you know line up for that operation. Yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Now the the challenge is always the pressure you get from the from the top side, right? <laughs> so I mean you you, uh, you know and, and and we saw that more than ever here recently, and you, you get it every couple of years. Get the, get the Kool Aid and get the pep talk, and and they. I'm not going to go over that's plowed ground. Everybody knows that. And um, so down here, you know, talking with some of our, 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 our friend dealerships down here in the South, you know, (laughs) we have to kind of sit down and, and have a lot of discipline. We have to have a lot of discipline um, to not, not bite on that. And, And the problem is that if you have one dealer group that's operating nearby that doesn't buy into that philosophy, it screws the pooch for the rest of them. Absolutely. That's the problem we run into. Yep. We and and I think every dealer across the world, for what it's worth, runs into that. If dealer A is trying their hardest, we we're hitting market share, 
We don't have any use problems. We're clicking along. This is the best plan ever. And dealer B is trying to get 3,000% market share, and exactly. they're just ruining everything. So Absolutely. I totally get we what you're it, we do it. We do it to ourselves. Right. And, exactly. And, and, that's, why, and that's why I've been preaching, and, and Eddie, Eddie, Eddie and I talk about it a, a ton, and, and with our management and our ownership group, um, you know, I, I think today more than ever, I, um, I, I firmly believe, and I, and I believe in the importance of the value of these relationships and how, how much all these dealers across the country need to be working and need to be talking. Right. And I, and I think that, I think Casey and you have done a tremendous amount whether you realize it or not, to propagate that, um, you know, and and I think in the five years that I've been in this in this on, on this side of the business, I, I've seen that level of communication and I and I uh, uh, improve. And and the more communication and the more synergy synergy there is, and the more like alignment as far as like operational like kind of mo you have across the country the healthier we will all be as organizations. Oh yeah, uh-huh. absolutely. Because it, and it's, it's easy to sit there, you know, buried in your laptop with your blinders on That's and right. stuff. But, and, and I've seen it, maybe I was going to use calm minds as an example, but that's kind of a bad example. But I know of times where we had like a hundred used S 600 series combines and I might sell a couple in the southeast to a dealer because you guys don't create combine problems like like we insist on doing. So it, it's easy to think, you know, if you look at us out here west and the I states all the way to western or eastern Ohio, right down I-80, everybody's got a combine problem. Well, there's a lot of rest of the world out there, and if everybody's working together – it makes a hell, hell of a huge difference. But, 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 Aaron, and I don't mean to cut you off, but, I, but I think it starts with, with awareness. Like, you, you, right. you, you know, I, and I'm going to sound like a real, like, what is the word, like newbie or rookie to the, I mean, a naive, whatever it may be. Most when I started, yeah. uneducated, yeah, foolish, uh, yeah, <laughs> hairbrained. Not anymore. <laughs> All right. yeah. I, I'll, 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 I'll tell you how much. I, how quickly I had to get my my head around this thing when I started, and I had a, I was reminded of it today when I was at our Leesburg store, which is where I kind of had my first office, and so I I, cre- I, I built a, a like a what I call a like a war room, literally. It was like a double it was a, it was a double cubicle, and I pulled everything out of there, and so you could push push pins everywhere, you know. So I went out and bought like the absolute biggest maps I could find. So I had a map of like the Southeast and, and of the whole country and of the, the world. And I went out and bought like different color push pins. And, and what I was trying to get my uh, uh, um, visualize was where's the hot spots for certain equipment? Cause this is how dumb I was. And this is how like unaware I was, right? Like where do people create combine surplus? Where are the other p- little niche pockets in the U.S., where people have a, a buy and, and, and a buy a, a peanut equipment or cotton equipment, right. or where are guys buying big sprayers and where are guys buying little uh, uh, two twenty five hundred uh, hour sprayers? Where are guys buying two wheel drive combines? Where are guys buying shittily spec row crop tractors? Where are guys buying tractors with leather? Right. And I'm telling you, it it took a long time to map that out and get your head around it. But what I found, like, at the end of that, like, being a newbie and not really having a gut feeling about all that and having to, like, mine that data all at the same time rather than trying to, like, uh, uh, learn it through experience and years of, oh, I heard they run two-wheel drive combines and a lot of them in Nebraska or whatever. Having to do it all in, like, a couple of months almost, like, really helped me. Like, it, 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 and... And the more you know what dealers are going to have, what problems when this or that is happening, I think the better you can uh, execute. That you know who to call. I mean, right. you know. Yeah. So, 
sure. That's my that's my soapbox dissertation. You got some feedback on that, Eddie? From your yeah. side of the fence? I've been in the war room. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> right on. Well, fellas, this has no, been a... Lou, you know, he, he brings a lot to the table. I mean, you know, I've been doing this. Uh, I'll be 42 next month. I've been doing this since I was 17. And not in this title, but being in the deer business and he brings a lot to the table for someone that hasn't, you know, hasn't been in it that long. Sometimes um, that helps. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so he, he brings a lot of aspects, you know, early on, we were all kind of scratching our heads, but you know, especially now he and I, I mean, it, it, uh, I can come up with a problem and he can find a solution. Um, you know, it's, it, it takes a lot of times, that you know, thinking outside the box, and he does a lot of that, and it's very, very helpful. And, and uh, a lot of things I pick up that I, you know, never was aware of or didn't think of it that way. So, you know, I think it's uh, alluding back to what he said. I think a lot of this is is relationships. You know, trying to work with dealers and You're trying to figure yeah. out. You know, if we're all going to have the same issue, we need to try to figure out a solution and work together. To uh, to get that solution handled in a timely manner, right? Um, yep. You know, our thing, our thing is cotton pickers, and and that's a very limited audience. Mm-hmm. And we kind of work with the dealers that do cotton, and uh, you you end up sometimes carrying pickers, and we've done that, and we're still working trying to resolve that. And you know, don't know if we'll ever get to that point where we don't, but you know, hopefully we will. And then the peanut side of it's a little different. We're very, very, very invested in peanuts. Uh, would, uh, yeah, without hesitation, we're the only dealer in North America that carries three brands, uh, a modest KMC in Columbo. So we, we have a whole different scenario on things. We, we've got three brands, um, we kind of set the pace and scale for Colombo. Amadis and KMC kind of already had their values uh, in the marketplace. Um, but then we have to be conscious of what we're doing with Colombo, KMC, and Amadis with the peanut market as it rises and falls, just like cotton. So sure. we, everybody's got a problem that's just a little different. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, very much a relationship-driven business, and when you really peel back the layers of the onion, everybody's onion is a little bit the same. There's, there's very, very few things that are different. You might have different, different equipment, and different uh, farming practices, and those kind of things. But at the end of the day, you use equipment, you use equipment, and it, exactly. there's, a, there's a wash up. A yellow lot. onion, a white onion, and a red onion are all <laughs> big ten four, good buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. All right, fellas. That's quick wit from a co-host. That's, that's how you become a co-host. That's nice. You get that was yeah. awesome. That was well executed. And and be more than a pretty face. You know what I'm saying? So that's just slightly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas. Do you have any last thoughts before we before you exit this segment of the Moving Iron Podcast? I got I got one thing that okay. I want to put out there. I want to, I want to plant a real quick seed because I think that our industry ha- has a that's hot. hot. That That's good. hot. That's hot. Yeah. Get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> still got and uh, you know, <clears throat> there's something that was that uh, went back to that being naive thing, like and not knowing how things work. I asked a question five years ago. You know, uh, when I I was uh, I, I've been doing this for about a month, and I asked the question. I'm like, you know. You know, why is it like they used to make fun of me? Like, you know, God, Lou, you guys these dumbass questions, but why is it that we can't sit down? Why is it that we're doing such, you know, why are we making such silly, what what you would think would be silly decisions, right? Why are we having to deal with such silly problems that in any other market or any other industry, like, could probably be a lot solved a lot? easier. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Through a little bit of communication, a little bit of analysis, a little better decision-making, right? And, um, and the, and the answer was, you know, you know, we could come out and we could do 
like like Aaron said, we, we could go out there and slow the train down and start try to slow cycles down and et cetera. But unless your neighbors are doing it, unless everybody's doing it, everybody's in agreement and, and, and everybody's got, you know, the 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 same agreement and, and, and nobody's uh, going to take a disproportionate amount of risk. Right. If everybody was going to agree to take the same amount of risk, right, to go up against deer or the manufacturers and and, uh, you know, it could be done. But but no, but you're never going to have a scenario in which. Uh, everybody is going to be aligned as far as, okay, um, let's all slow this thing down or let's all um, try to talk our customers into showing some value rather than just meeting metrics. And, you know, well, all of a sudden, here's a phenomenon that's been put in our lap, right, that has put us all on a level playing field as far as we all have inventory availability issues right. we're all having to adjust our 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 trade allowances and in our in our our market uh, 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 the equipment price at which we're selling equipment et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. and um even down to a, a product support standpoint i mean we're all we're all challenged by that as well like we're losing text left and right and so is our neighbor and um so we're all, all of a sudden, like there's not because we did something right or wrong, but we're all kind of in a in a in a, a, a more even keel position, right, across the country, not segmented, right. And so, and so, all of a sudden, there's a lot of good things that have come out of that. I've been saying for years, or this whole used equipment thing, the way to make it make more sense is you got to slow it down. Well, it got slowed down. So my hope and the seed I want to plant is that I hope that when this thing rebounds that we all were able to to see the good things that came out of this and that we we take something away from that as an industry and 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 we increase our our health uh in a in a in a way that that will last and that we don't regress back to doing stupid business and uh, doing business for fun and not talking to each other and uh, and being a really terrible, you know, uh, 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 use of capital as a, as a, as a, as a company. Um, so I, 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 that's my hope for us as a, as an industry. That's that that's my uh, the wisdom I wanted to plant before the end of the my request before the end of the my segment. I'm done. <laughs> Right on. All right. Deep thoughts by Lou Bordone. That's a good one. I like that. <clears throat> now, I think uh, you, the best practices side of this business is always something people talk about. And I'm right there with you, Lou. That what, what's coming out of this is that this will be the first time when it slows down and things go back to a normal uh, level of, of consistency is that you're going to be filling up an empty cupboard. So you have an ability to go back in and, and fill that up with you know, good wholesome food and not right. you know, exactly. not Twinkies and Ho Hos. Right. You know what I mean? This is in the <laughs> cupboard because we had to have it. That's right. That's right. So I mean, yeah, you can you can really put things back in there the way they're supposed to go. So I'm with you. I hope, I hope so too. I hope that we come out of this on the on the backside of a little wiser, a little smarter, and uh, a little bit more. Um, you know, 2019, 2018, 2017 really wasn't that long ago. And That's right. We can go down a path of of High correction here pretty quick if we're not careful. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So, so what you're saying is when we do go to the store because the cupboards are bare, leave the teenage boys at home. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We Got don't it. need We don't need Hostess fruit pies. Frito-Lay is not invited. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Eddie, have any last thoughts? Oh, man, it's hard to hard to come back after what Lou said. I mean, that's pretty strong, pretty deep. Yep. Right on. Uh, I, you know... A lot of what he said is is there. I mean, we just got to uh, try to, if we can, work together and uh, try to figure out where this thing's going to go. Because there's, you can take every expert in the world and and take all your commodity prices, but if the good Lord don't give you the the water and the sunshine and the right temperatures and the right weather, we're not none of us are going to going to get through this thing. So I mean, it's. Uh, it's one of those that, uh, you know, 
I've talked to guys that uh, last time they remember anything like this in the equipment industry was probably in the in the eighties. Um, so, you know, I don't know that we'll ever. Hopefully, you know, it's good and bad seeing this. So I'll just leave it at that. that I don't, you know, I don't know that we'll ever see this again because we're um, we're looking at. It, you know, trading machines is three or four years old and exactly giving them back exactly what they paid for. Right. Yeah. Selling, selling them a three or four year old tractor, um, you know, 25 to 40% above what it should be. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just the way that the market is. And, you know, we didn't, we didn't call this, we didn't set it. We're just, we're, we're playing the game that, uh, that we were told to play. Yeah. Right. All we can do is play in the arena we were put in, man. Exactly. Not a day gladiators. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, fellas, uh, speak, for, speak for yourself, dude. I don't. I mean, you know, you guys look like you could kick our asses. <laughs> Not Eddie's. The 1982 uh, uh, stationary bike back there. That's. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's hardcore. Um, Pretty core. <laughs> Well, okay. So last last little thing, real quick, just get your get your feedback. So both of you guys, Ken Move and Iron Summit this last year, you've been there before. Um, what are some of the big takeaways you have when you go to those meetings like that? Uh, camaraderie, uh, you know, getting to get to meet and talk and visit with other dealers, especially the guys that that don't sell the same color. Right. You know, non deer, uh, mother deer has always preached. One avenue with 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 going to those uh, different meetings, we can take the fork in the road and go a different path and try to come back over and and bring something back to our dealership, you know, individually or as a team to put in place. Um, I think that is something that that needs to continue, and hopefully, it can continue. Um, uh, I think we all raised our hand for Nashville. So yeah. <laughs> if, where it's going to be, I will definitely yeah. be. Yeah, I'll um, be there. No, it, it's, it's a wonderful experience. Like I said, especially to meet people other than John Deere. Right, absolutely. Great thing. My, my biggest takeaway is that, you know, I always would have thought that, uh, you know, those electric mopeds, like, would be not a really big deal to, like, <laughs> to operate but it's a lot more complicated than what you would think in yeah. certain times of day it more is. than others yeah, exactly. i really respect those guys in the tight jeans like i mean they're yeah. they're braver than i ever gave them credit for um yeah. so but beyond, beyond that absolutely eddie is hit the nail on the head the camaraderie and the fact that you know you get to sit down in a different environment with with guys that are doing the same thing you're doing and like you said earlier, I mean, you know, you get your nose to the grindstone and you're behind that laptop and it's real easy or you're out in the field and you're, you know, photographing and kind of in the, in the, in the getting a rut of getting things done and you forget to look around and see kind of the, the macro uh, uh, um, uh, idea of, hey, man, I, I could be doing this differently, you know, I, I, and so those meetings are real good about, you know, sitting down with people that you know have, have, have done a really good job at certain parts of what we do and you get an opportunity to 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 kind of get a glimpse inside of of man this guy's really thought this through man i i've had conversations i remember having a 30 minute conversation one time with brent bowen about the proper angle to photograph an 8r and you think we were talking about fine art right you know like as far as like this is like or, or talking with like french people about champagne and the, like that is not champagne you know <laughs> like that is not how to photograph an 8r this is how to do it right you know and 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 he is the god when it comes to photographing 8rs he really is like he makes tractor porn and like so and and, and in 30 minutes i gained the the I, I learned how to do something that I thought I was doing well a lot better, mm -hmm. you know, and it goes with everything. It, 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 that you, 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 there's so much synergy. And the one last thing about your meetings or, you know, those, those uh, moving iron meetings is that as the years go on, as, 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 as we move forward, I think that the level of intimacy in these meetings and, and, and the people's willingness to 
uh, open up and realize that, you know what, man, like this whole thing about keeping everything guarded and, you know, these like industry, like, you know what, like, yeah, there's some things you're going to got to keep close to the, to the vest, but for the most part, like best practices benefit everybody. Absolutely. I mean, you know, and, yeah. and, and I, and I think that's, I, I imagine that was always your intention and you kind of had that vision to begin with, but, uh, but I, I think that as the years go on and as the culture changes, it, 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 we're more and more effective or uh, is growing as an industry. Right on. So. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's the key function of that is is the networking, uh, the sharing of best practices and, and then, you know, listen to a few speakers talk and maybe glean some piece of information from from that you can take back and kind of put into your to your system. So no, I appreciate you guys coming and all that stuff. So, Eddie, Folks want to reach out to you and get more information about what you're doing or just pick your brain about stuff. What's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Uh, cell phone. Uh, add or my email, cell phone 706-871-2555. Right on, man. And Lou, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Cell email, pigeon, uh, 954-815-7981 or lbordoni at flintequipco.com. Right on. Okay, guys. Well, appreciate you being on this segment, fellas, and a good conversation as always. So take care of yourselves, and we'll catch you next time. The only thing I will you say let, real quick, Lou, don't compare Brent to Hugh Hefner ever again. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know he's going to hear that, and he's going to eat it up. <laughs> 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 Drink out of this. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Right. I, I will. I will cash that in. <laughs> All right on. Thanks, guys. So I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Have a good weekend. And with that, Lou and Eddie have left the Zoom call. So, Aaron, as, a, as usual, those guys are always wealth of information, especially Lou. Absolutely. The dude thinks about shit. Constantly, you know what I mean. Like really Constantly. thinks about stuff. He like I'm the Iron Geek, mm -hmm. and you're just you're like beyond Thunderdome Geek, and he's like the everyday numbers, decimals, spreadsheets right. yeah. geek. He takes a lot of notes too. You ever notice that when you go to a meeting? Oh yeah, dude Constantly. takes like reams of. Notes. So you said at nine thirty six that. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So, well, I think that's a good place to jump off here. I mean, we had a good conversation. Here, boots on the ground. That end of the spectrum, like we talked about, we're going to see more of this stuff take place where you've oh, yeah. got this filling back up with the cabinet thing and, and what that looks like and how things change along the way. So it's going to be an interesting next couple of years to see how this thing all the way shakes out. Buckle up, buddy. Buckle up. That's right. All right, man. Folks, want to reach out to you, get more information from you about what you're doing. What's the best way to do that? Uh, call me or text me, 308-760-1193, AFINTEL at 21EQUIP on Facebook and... Soon to be on Twitter again. <laughs> Weekend goals. <laughs> <laughs> I am uh, Casey Seymour. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Moving Iron LLC. You can also go to movingironllc.com to get all the latest information about the Moving Iron Summit coming up here in Nashville, Tennessee, September 6, 7, and 8. i uh, have that information up there. In the meantime, if you want more information about that, send me an email at movingironpodcast at movingironpodcast.com, and we'll get you what you're looking for there. So with that... I want to thank uh, Eddie Claxton and Lou Bordone for being on the Boots on the Ground segment. And uh, Aaron Fennell and Casey Seymour. Let's go do some iron, folks. Out. You want to have a meaningful competitive advantage to help sell more equipment. Whether you represent the sales, parts, or management department of an implement dealership, there's a surprising amount of complexity when it comes to tire, wheel, and track technology. Let Axon worry about that so you can get back to supporting your customers. Axon has leveraged years of experience to create a streamlined process that gives you a proven path to help today's grower and sell more equipment. The roots of their organization go back almost 100 years to the invention of the rubber tractor tire. Supporting agriculture is the number one driver of Axon from product development through sales and service. To find more or become an Axon dealer, head over to axontire.com. Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800-657-4910 for all of your trucking needs at Valley Transportation. Our goal is to help you reach yours. And no matter how you buy ag equipment from a dealer, auction, or a private party, Ag Direct can help you finance it. You can even apply at agdirect.com. Learn more about your financing options at agdirect.com. Mm -hmm.
and iron in the 21st century. Hard working people working hard for you.